Hi, so I just wanted to make a quick little video on how I got the Super Nintendo hooked up to my Commodore 1084S monitor using RGB. So, um, this monitor is actually pretty special since it has three input methods. You can use composite, S-video, or RGB, and, um, it was originally created to be used with the Commodore 64, um, and uh, I think that it had all three of those output methods, but um, I've never used one myself. I was just given this monitor by a friend a while ago, and um, I had my stuff hooked up to it with S-Video for quite a while, but I always wanted to try that RGB, and um, this is the first RGB anything I've ever owned, so I thought I'd give it a try. So my original idea to hook up this SNES was to use a nice high quality SCART cable and plug that into an adapter that'll adapt it to the 15 pin deal that's on the back of the Commodore monitor. But um, I found out that that was going to be pretty expensive because a nice high quality SCART cable will run you at least $50 and the adapter I think at the time it was like 25 bucks or something like that and you had to order it from um, from the UK, so I thought, well, maybe I can hack together a couple of cables that will essentially do the same thing, um, and I can, you know, do it pretty cheaply. So here was my dilemma. On the back of the monitor, you can see it has four RCA jacks there on the right, and um, those are actually for the composite and the S-video signal, and as well as the audio. So, um, that, that's what I was previously using. And um, I'll just show you. Here's the S-video cables for the SNES. And um, obviously this does not have a S-video input on the back, it just has those RCA cables. So before um, this connector was created. Actually, the way that S-Video was sent was over two RCA cables. So, what I have here is an adapter. It's actually two adapters. So the first one um, is just female to female. So I can change what it is on the other end of it. And the second one is a regular S-Video to the RCA jacks. So using those, I can hook it up to the Luma and Chroma inputs on the monitor. And um, yeah, so I think this is the Luma, that's the Chroma, and you gotta hit a special button to tell it that it's in S video mode. And that worked pretty good for a while, but um, I always wanted to try out that RGB port. So here it is, the custom cable that I made for the Super Nintendo. And um, as you can see, it's got the jack that hooks up into the back of the Super Nintendo, and that breaks out into this DB15 connector and two RCA jacks. Now the reason why I have to break it out into these three uh, cables here is because the uh, monitor does not accept audio from this jack as far as I know. So you have to splice actually three cables together to get this to work. So I found this, uh, it's a male to male uh, RS-232 cable. And I got it in beige so it would match the, you know, the Super Nintendo and the Commodore and everything. Sadly, my RCA jacks did not match, but it doesn't really matter. I got them for like two bucks. And, um... So the other cable that I used to get this to work was a, like, cheap six dollar, um... SCART cable for the SNES. And that gave me this plug that I used. And you can see I uh, glued it back together because um, there's actually some components in here 
Um, and so that, so without knowing it, I actually got everything I needed with these three cables. Um, originally I thought, well, just look up some uh, wiring diagrams and see like the pinouts for the Commodore monitor and the Super Nintendo and just, you know, hook up the, the RGB cables and there you go. But as I did more research, I found out that I actually was missing some steps that I needed to take for in order for it to work correctly. So uh, I, I got a picture of when I was making this cable and I'll put that up now, but essentially with the, the, the way that the Super Nintendo outputs its RGB cable or RGB signal, you have to put some capacitors in line with the three uh, RG and B signals as well as, you know, you need a sync signal to be sent. So there are four um, types of signals being sent to this connector, the RGB and C-Sync. Now on the diagrams that I found, I'll put those up as well, um, they're actually both labeled C-Sync on both the monitor end and the Super Nintendo end, so that made it pretty easy. and. You do, you do need a resistor to go in between that as well, but with my cheap $6 um, SCART cable, uh, in the SCART connector, like that has all the pins and stuff on it, it had all of those components that I needed. So I didn't know I needed those at first, but I was glad that I had them. So my next problem was, how do I um, fit those components that I need into this cable. Now, as you can see, um, they're not along the cable. That's what I originally thought I'd have to do, because I don't want to take apart this connector and try and fiddle with stuff in there. Um, I don't think there's really any space in it anyway. And, um, when I took this connector out, I found that there was a little bit of space to work with so I thought well maybe I can fit all of those components and cram them in really tight and um, so I have this nice clean looking cable and so that's what I did and it was a little bit frustrating to solder all the tiny little components and figure out how I'm going to arrange them but in the picture you can see I was able to do it and I plugged it in and to my surprise it actually worked now, um, if you do want to do this and make your own custom cable, you might want to consider getting some higher quality capacitors. Uh, I think the resistor is fine. It doesn't really matter what you use, but um, these are low quality capacitors that were in my $6 cable. So if, I, if they ever fail or leak or whatever, I'm gonna have to take this apart and rebuild it and use some nice capacitors so it will last. Hopefully I don't have to do that, but just something to keep in mind if you do want to do this yourself. So how do these signals actually compare to each other? So this is the regular composite signal, and uh, this is the regular cable that you would get with your Super Nintendo, the yellow, white, and red cable, and um, yeah, it doesn't look too good, especially since I'm, I've been using that RGB cable for a while now. It uh, looks a little soft. Um, here, if the title comes in, yeah, you can see um, around the uh, lettering that there is some like striping that shouldn't be there. Yeah, you can really see it there, but um, yeah, it doesn't look too good. Now here we have the S-Video cables plugged in, and you can already see the picture looks so much clearer. Um, the text looks very sharp around the edges. We don't have that um, striping or banding effect on the lettering anymore. It uh, just looks a lot cleaner in general. And uh, you can actually see the outlines of the pixels. Looks much nicer. 
So this is the RGB plugged in now. And uh, that's what I had running throughout the beginning of the video. But here's a little closer look at it. Um, still looks a lot sharper than the S video even. And where you can really see it is around the text. Um, there is less sort of fading as it goes from a solid color to a brighter color. Um, but actually with this Super Nintendo, it it is the first model, it's the 2-chip. And um, with the different models of the Super Nintendo that would come out, they each had a different uh, RGB amplifiers that would affect the signal in different ways. This one has a nice signal that is balanced and so you get a you get a great signal right off the bat but um, compared to the later ones it has a little bit of streaking when you go from pixel to pixel from left to right it sort of fades into the next one you can and I think you can sort of see that in the video around like these O's right here they kind of fade to the right a little bit with the one chip model, the signal coming out was a little bit brighter than it should be. It's a little bit out of spec, so I don't think it really matters too much for this application, you know, just plugging it into an analog uh, TV. But when you plug it into an upscaler and it converts it to an HDMI signal, uh, things can start to look a little off. So I'm just kind of happy with the way that this is set up, you know, it's more than good enough for um, for what I need it for. And uh, in all, you know, my cable cost me around 25 bucks. Uh, it just was a little bit difficult to figure out what exactly I needed to do to get it working perfectly. Anyway, I hope this video helped and gave you a better idea of what kind of video quality you can get out of your Super Nintendo and just how to uh, hook it up in this particular instance. But yeah, thank you for watching, and uh, see you next time.